Martha Stewart Living Radio on Sirius 112 and XM 157. Learn something new every day. Welcome to Whole Living, the place to get expert advice and fresh ideas about eating well, going green, staying fit, and much more. And now, here is your host. And welcome to Whole Living on Martha Stewart Living Radio, Sirius 112 and XM 157, and of course, now available on your iPhone. I'm Terry Gisbisho, your host and senior editor at Body and Soul Magazine. And our number here is 866-675-6675. Also, you know, you can check out our blog anytime and check out what exactly we've been up to. I'm sure there's lots of shots up there from our gardening trip to the New York Botanical Garden last week. I also posted some stuff about our off-campus uh, trekking around. My producer, Jennifer Sendro, and I went around into Arthur Ave in the Bronx and went did a little market shopping, and I took some pictures, and that might all be up there now. I'm not sure, but MarthaStewart.com slash radio blog. Jen, have you checked that? Well, Terry, I'm looking at the blog right now, I'm and look at it myself. the number one post on there is actually about our pedometer challenge, which oh, yes. we'll be talking about a little later. We will be talking about the pedometer thing later, and you can join us for the walk-off. We'll talk about that coming up later on the show. But first, here on Whole Living, we're, we're always looking for different, complementary, n- more natural sort of approaches to maintaining and supporting it, and even improving our health. And we talk about herbal therapies, we talk about mind-body treatments, and so on. And why? Well, because keeping an open mind and staying informed about all that's out there in the way of different therapies can give us every advantage when it comes to feeling our best and staying strong, which, of course, is what we want, right? So today we're going to explore an approach to health that you may have heard something about you might not have. It's called Ayurveda, and it's considered, our, and we'll check with our expert about this, but one of the oldest systems of healthcare on record in joining us to explain what it is, how it works, and how we can benefit from it. Benefit from it is Daniel Roda, who's a certified Ayurvedic practitioner and teacher. Daniel, welcome. Thank you, Terry. Good to be here. Great to have you here. Now, start us off with some basic 101 info here. What is Ayurveda in a nutshell? Well, as you correctly said, this is one of the oldest healing systems that we know of today. It actually translates as the science of life, Ayus meaning life and Veda meaning science or wisdom. Some would actually call Ayurveda the mother of all healing systems. Hmm. So today we look at, of course, things like massage therapy, aromatherapy, even elements of acupuncture are said to have their roots in this incredible system. So does it pre date, I guess, you know, traditional Chinese medicine or, you know, it's hard to understand how these things all fit together. So Ayurveda is from India, right? It's from, so, yes, correct. It's from the region we call India today. It actually extends okay. beyond that geographic locale. It's at least 5,000 years old. Some would say up to, you know, seven or 8,000 years old. Wow. And so that's something that's been around a long time, lo- far longer than, say, our own conventional Western medicine, right? I would dare say yes. Uh, yes. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean one is better than the other. We use them for different things. And so if you've got a question about Ayurveda, you've got a specific question maybe for how Ayurveda can help a condition that you have, take a shot. Daniel will answer your questions here on Whole Living. We're at 866-675-6675. And, okay, so let's start with first how you got drawn to Ayurveda. Your own story, Daniel. Okay, I'd say it's been a roundabout journey for me personally. I was actually on Wall Street in my early 20s and due to a degenerative joint condition, I ended up in a wheelchair at a young age. And uh, I was Hmm. seeing the, you know, the top medical doctors in New York City and I was having lots of surgeries and lots of medications, but nothing was really getting to the root of the problem. And that's where I turned my attention to this vast science of Ayurveda. And so how did it help you? It helped me through really looking at my entire lifestyle. I mean, some people always want to know what was the magic bullet. And I always say, really, it started by looking at all aspects of my life. You know, how I was eating, how I was sleeping, how I was managing stress on a daily basis and through different herbal therapies, massage therapies, and also an integrative approach. As you mentioned, you know, no one system is better than any other. So if there were little uh, aspects of, you know, uh, allopathic or modern medicine that worked, I, I integrated those as well. Right. And then how did your health change over time? How long ago was that? uh, That was about nine years ago at this point. 
And uh, my health changed through really reducing a lot of the inflammatory tendency for my particular body and constitution, mm -hmm. and also just creating you know greater greater clarity of my mind and uh, just having overall more uh, homeostasis, I would say, within the body. So it's as much a mental benefit as a physical benefit. Are you in as much pain? Did it reduce pain, something like that, or was it was it that direct in effect, or was it more of a calming? Uh, it, de it definitely reduced pain. I mean, there was a direct physiological impact on the various therapies that I was doing, you know. People's health change. Yeah, you know, I, I was very fortunate. Uh, when I wasn't doing very well with my own health, I decided to go to Hawaii, of all places. I just figured there was some place that I could potentially heal. Probably wasn't the streets of Manhattan, you know, pounding the pavement every day. So I just picked up and went to Hawaii. I had the opportunity to study there with uh, Dr. Thomas Yurima and Dr. Suos Kishirsagar, two of the you know, leading Ayurvedic practitioners and Western medical doctors that I know of today practicing. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that's been really surprising to me is to see such a broad spectrum of illnesses and conditions that have been successful. To the person, and of course, one thing I do know about Ayurveda is that it uh, it, it it sort of centers around the three doshas, yes, right? So, yeah. will you talk a little bit about what those are and and what that means in terms of? Ayurvedic care. Yeah, you know, if I really go back to one component of Ayurveda that resonated with me most deeply, it was this concept that we all have unique constitutional types. There's three, what, what I'll say, uh, umbrella types, vata, pitta, and kapha that are talked about in Ayurvedic medicine. Vata relates to uh, individuals who are naturally very thin, slender, maybe a bit bony. Uh, these are individuals who can eat as much food as they want. They'll never gain a pound. Mm -hmm. uh, they're often very fast moving, fast talking, uh, creative types. And, you know, it's, it's fascinating because we look at Western medicine and we see a lot of these conditions that relate to dryness in the body. Things such as dry skin, constipation, arthritic conditions. And these go back to an imbalance in this core vata dosha. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first one. And then the second is pitta. Pitta relates to the element of fire. It actually governs all of the metabolic fires of the body. So when we're talking about inflammatory conditions in the body, uh, again, anything relating to, to digestion, skin rashes, more things like rheumatoid arthritis, these relate to imbalances within pitta. Uh, pitta individuals are naturally very uh, kind of type A individuals. You know, they like to get <laughs> right. things done, take care of business. Uh, there's a joke. Strong presence. There. Yeah, strong presence. There's a joke in Ayurveda that pitta individuals don't don't go to hell ever. They just create it for everyone else around them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I love that. that so that's that type. So we got the real, the right, light, kind of bird-like, airy, dry kind of person. Yeah. And, and see, it's interesting because there are all these different descriptors for this one type. It, you know, it's not just oh they're really fast talking, but they're also thin and they're all, it takes yes. into account everything. Then we have pitta, who's fire, a little yes. bit more more muscle. You know, I think of as mus not just muscular, but strong and strong willed and yes. strong headed. And then the last one. The last one is called kapha. Now, kapha relates to all of the structure of the body and the fluid balance of the body. Uh, we, we say in Ayurveda that the kapha individuals are the ones who are naturally bigger, you know, naturally a bit bigger in the bones. Mm -hmm. The ones who can, you know, look at a piece of cake and gain five pounds. Right. Uh, and these are the individuals that the uh, maybe the imbalanced and frazzled vatas and the intense pittas go to for big hugs because the kaphas are naturally... <laughs> You know, calming yeah calming and very nurturing so nurturing calming and um is it true i've also heard you know they they have longer endurance whereas yeah. a vata will kind of burn out yeah absolutely it goes back to this base structure of the body i mean these are individuals who are solid you know they're solid at their core they have incredible endurance ways that imbalance typically come up for a cough individual are more related to things like obesity asthma, diabetes. These are all coffee mm -hmm. conditions in Ayurvedic medicine. So interestingly, it's not the goals in health are not everyone should become a vata or everyone should become this. There's no one that's better or worse. They're just three different types. Now, but no one's always, you know, cast in totally in one type, right? I mean, I know just because I have a little bit of understanding about that. I have taken a quiz, I think, online and, and also, the, you know, one of our health editor, Tanya Hannon, has told me many times that I'm a pitta vata. Okay. You know, whereas someone else might be a vata pitta, which is a, a little bit of the change, right? That what you say first and what's second 
it's like dominant and less dominant, right? That's correct. I mean, okay. the, the theory is that um, the biological energies of our parents at conception combine and create a primary dosha, so vata, pitta, and kapha, in our constitutional makeup. But then there's also a strong secondary dosha that's at play. And so we're all sort of a blend of things. You kind of lean toward one or the other because we don't want to oversimplify that everyone fits into three boxes because maybe not. Yes. So, we, right. Yeah, we, we are a blend. And I mean, one of the beauties of this science is that it acknowledges we have these vata, pitta, and kapha biological energies at our core. And it's good to just pay a little bit of extra attention to the one that may be most, you know, predominant. So in the summer, for example, a pitta individual is naturally going to get a little bit more fired up and potentially overheated and even acidic within the body uh, more easily than, say, a kaphic individual. So they can take measures to balance out that fire in their core constitution. Okay, so once you know your type, then you can go about seeking balance within that type because each type has its benefits and also has its uh, vulnerabilities, it sounds like. Is there a place or a way to know what type you are for people who are listening to this and say, oh, I want to know what I am? Yeah, you know, one of, uh, one of the great ways to do it is to take a, a self-test, just like you mentioned. Um, a book that I wrote with Dr. Thomas Urema called Eat, Taste, Heal uh, on okay. our website, mm-hmm. eattasteheal.com. Uh, there's some dosha tests on that website. Oh, great. In the book, of course, uh, itself, it's there. And you can also seek out an Ayurvedic practitioner, which which are becoming much more common in the U.S., thankfully. And they can, you know, do kind of your medical history and then do something called pulse diagnosis, where they get an even more accurate read on what your constitutional makeup may be. So once you, say, figure out what your dosha is, then you can see about beginning to balance it. But if you say, oh, I want to really consider this maybe because you have something that's been plaguing you health-wise, and you say, I want to find and uh, meet with an Ayurvedic practitioner, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to throw your standard doctor out the window, right? You can integrate all of these into your life, because I shouldn't do that. Have you found a lot of that is trouble integrating into one person's life here? Sure. Well, the, at its core, Ayurveda is a non-exclusionary science. It's, it doesn't really go for the dogma so much. It says if something's helping an individual, that's what they should be doing or that's what they should be taking. And it acknowledges that health and health care also evolves over time. So if there's modalities within modern allopathic medicine that can help an individual or maybe a diagnostic method, by all means do that. Uh, some Sometimes there can be mild contraindications if individuals are on, you know, six different Western medicines and the Ayurvedic practitioner wants to give them some herbs. Uh, it, right. just, it just takes a little bit of, uh, you know, extra digging and knowledge to make sure that those are all working in harmony together. How do you evaluate an Ayurvedic practitioner? If you want to go see someone, how do you know they've, I mean, they're, they're, it's not the same standard in terms of they didn't go to medical school, right, for four years or six or eight years or whatever. How, how does an Ayurvedic practitioner become who they are yeah there's a couple of different levels like uh, my my direct teacher dr. Suos Kusir Sagar is probably one of you know maybe seven true Ayurvedic physicians practicing in the United States today now those are so she's indi- a physician yeah he's a physician who in India went to medical school for eight okay. years who actually from the age of eight was learning all of the traditional Sanskrit sutras uh, it, that's an entirely different level of education uh, someone like myself may study a about four to five years uh, within the theory and the clinical uh, aspect of it. And fortunately, much like traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda is now becoming more systematized and codified in the United States to have uh, you know, much more uh, uniformity among practitioners. So should, how should someone go about finding ones that is safely, you know, is there one place to make sure you could check out a certain practitioner? Yeah, typically, I mean... To find the, one and also check their credentials? Yeah, there's, there's, a few, uh, there's a few primary schools and certifying institutions, Ayurvedic Institute of America, uh, Kerala Ayurveda. Typically, individuals going through these full programs, like uh, AyurvedaAcademy.com, for example, is a place, and you can go and find practitioners in your area and okay. you know they're they're wonderful practitioners great now let's talk a little bit about eating habits since i know the f- of course food is one of our most basic forms of self care how does ayurvedic uh, how does what does the ayurvedic approach say about foods or what is sort of the philosophy there 
Well, there's a, it's a huge component of Ayurveda because Ayurveda identifies many of the core imbalances in our body or disease processes are somehow related to poor digestion. And it's interesting because digestion goes beyond just the physiology. It even talks about how well we're digesting our mental thoughts and impressions oh, on, wow. a, on a daily <laughs> basis. So if we're not doing that well, that's when we can have a whole host of mental illnesses, for example, along with the physical illness. So you're looking at you're weighing both sort of equally. Though. Yeah, you're absolutely weighing both. And uh, one of the core components of Ayurvedic nutrition is that it, it identifies six tastes that are present within all foods. Uh, these are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, pungent, which just means spicy, and astringent, which just means, uh, you know, slightly drying. Mm -hmm. uh, and the theory is that we want uh, a nice balance of these six tastes within the food we're eating because they constitute a full nutritional spectrum, you know, to get all of those phytonutrients. So everyone should have all six. It's not like, oh, this type can only eat these kind. or. Yeah, you want to have all six. But again, uh, just like the exam example of the pittas in the summer, you want a favor <laughs> taste that may be slightly balancing towards your individual constitution. So again, to go back to pitta, we know pittas individually uh, have a little bit more acidity within their system. We know that naturally occurring sweet foods, uh, such as grains and fruits and certain vegetables, are very cooling and alkalizing to the system. Bitter foods are also very cooling. You know, dark leafy greens such as kale are cooling and some of the most detoxifying foods in the plant kingdom. Uh, whereas a vata individual wants foods that are very nourishing and rich, that have great fatty acids and oils and amino acids and things that will kind of ground down the body and the mm -hmm. physiology and the kaphas of course want things that are you know a little bit spicier you know sometimes to you got to kick them into gear a little sometimes bit sometimes you got to kick them in the butt a little bit you know <laughs> to, to fire up that metabol uh, metabolism to burn through some of the excess fatty tissue so Isn't yeah that interesting so different tastes affect different doshas, as we're saying, different ways. We're speaking with Daniel Rhoda, who's a certified Ayurvedic practitioner and teacher. You can check him out at eattasteheal.com. And if you'd like to join the conversation, we're at 866-675-6675. We're talking about different kinds of foods, or tastes, actually. It's interesting to focus on the taste, not the food. Like, no carbs for you, more fats for you. It's kind of nice to think about food in terms of how does it taste. And because you know, we crave different foods, and I'm assuming that when I crave a certain food, does that mean in Ayurvedic terms that I should have more of it or I shouldn't? For instance, I crave sour and spicy stuff, uh, mostly sour stuff sometimes, and that you're saying that pittas, which I kind of pretty much am, uh, they're too acidic. So are my cravings working against me in that sense? That's actually a great question because sometimes when the body is in a state of imbalance, you know, so we have this crazy lifestyle, we're not eating the foods that really work for our bodies, and we go into this uh, suboptimal state, sometimes we're naturally attracted to the foods that actually will create more imbalance within oh, the body. No. So, I thought we should trust our body's appetites, and now we can't really. Well, no, you you absolutely know. That's the core principle. You have to trust your body because naturally with a little bit of guidance, you are going to be guided back to the foods that work better for you. So, again, you know, the vata individual sometimes may, you know, want a big bag of potato chips, okay? And, and why would they want a potato chips? Well, salt, which we know naturally brings fluids into the body and the tissues. Aha, because they're dry. Creates a little bit of hydration, but the potato chip itself is very astringent and drying. So then it can create a little bit of excess gas and actual constipation. So oh. you want to you want to balance out the vata diet with, you know, a little bit of salt, you know, a little extra salt in the diet, but then going more, you know, to these rich oils and foods that are going to uh, lubricate the body and the tissues. Because let's face it, if you want something salty... You know, there's more ways to get it than a bag of potato chips. Yes. You know, so it's the, the quality of the food choice that matters. Yeah, it's the quality of the food choice. And sometimes, to go back to your question about craving, sometimes we'll have a, a, a mild depletion within the tissues. And uh, it's interesting. We look at coffee today, and a lot of people will vilify coffee in the health community because, you know, people, people uh, abuse it. But it's interesting that coffee is very bitter and astringent in taste if you aren't, you know, totally loading it with sugar. And in small amounts, particularly for, say, a coffee individual, that can again fire up the metabolism and be a very uh, good agent for the body in a smaller so quantity. So in a way, 
it, Ayurveda doesn't vilify foods then as a rule. It's about balancing different things. So rather than just saying coffee's bad, this is good. You know, that comes up, up you know, you get one new study out that says this is good for that, and then everyone changes their opinion. Ayurveda seems, well, of course, it's a long time coming, 8,000 years. They're not going to change because one study comes out. So there's some deeper truths here, it sounds like. If someone's craving a little bitterness who's a kapha who wants a little coffee, then maybe that's a good thing. That's correct. I mean, again, it's it's not about the dogma. I mean, sometimes people will come to me and say, you know, is uh, are cranberries an Ayurvedic food? And I say, well, that's actually not quite the question because Ayurveda is just a philosophy that analyzes all of these tastes and different components of mm-hmm. the food itself to then figure out, you know, is this going to work beneficially for your constitution? Well, you changed your eating habits, right? Yes, I absolutely Over time. Did. Was there any, what was the, say, the most major change that seemed to have the biggest difference for you? Well, I'd say that there were, there are a couple. I mean, one of them is just uh, going from this modern, crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more awareness awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like living foods, as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. And prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more awareness awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like living foods, as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. And prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more awareness awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like living foods, as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. And prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more awareness awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like living foods, as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. And prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more awareness awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology.
So, so living foods too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like living foods as a, well with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative laden stuff is not going to be life promoting in any way. Yeah. And this goes back to the core principle of prana or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself? I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and, and see whether or not this is a uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. Prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things. Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more away awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like, living foods as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and, and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. And prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more away awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like, living foods as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and, and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. And prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more away awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like, living foods as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and, and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. And prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more away awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like, living foods as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and, and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. Prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more away awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like, living foods as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core 
vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. Prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things. Yes, correct. And okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like, living foods, as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana, or what is this core vibrant energy within the food itself. I mean, we can look at food oftentimes and, and see whether or not this is uh, prana rich or has uh, inherent energy within and it. Prana, prana meaning energy, a kind of energetic force that's in all living things? Yes, correct. And, okay. uh, and you know, this is a modern crazy lifestyle of packaged and processed foods to bringing a little bit more awareness awareness into the foods I was choosing on a daily basis, you know, trying to shop organically when I could, trying to shop locally, and then fine-tuning it to different tastes to help balance out my physiology. So, so living foods, too, isn't that a big thing with Ayurveda? Like, living foods, as a, well, with any diet, you know, processed, dried, preservative-laden stuff is not going to be life-promoting in any way. Yeah, and this goes back to the core principle of prana or 